Welcome back. Well, we've had a look at a few different ways of describing data that we've imported to pandas and into a data frame. Let's have a look at a couple of different ways we can view and select data. So we'll come down here, we'll put another little heading in. So we go viewing and selecting data. We're gonna hit escape and M for markdown, shift and enter because we're keeping our notebooks nice and clean and communicative right from the beginning. So to begin, one of the first things you'll do is have a look at the head of your data frame. And now remember, this has brackets after it, so it's a function. And what this is going to do is return the first or the top five rows of your data frame. Now you might be thinking, why five? Well, that's a good question. I'm not entirely sure, but five seems like a pretty good number. And so in practice, what you'll probably be doing is manipulating your data frame in some way and then calling head on it fairly often. So you don't have, now our data frame is only 10 rows. So calling the whole thing isn't actually too bad, but imagine if you had thousands of these. So what head does is it gives you a quick snapshot in a small little space of what your data frame contains. So if you make a couple quick changes here and there, you might wanna look at the top five rows. And if five isn't enough, maybe you wanna look at the top seven. Well, the beautiful thing about head is that you can type in a number here and it will return that many rows. So you can have a play around and return whatever amount of rows you want. Now, for some reason, if you wanted the bottom of your data frame, you can use dot tail and that will return, you might've guessed, the bottom five rows. Now, this is handy if you're doing some alterations on the bottom of your data frame rather than the top. And so the changes will only appear towards the bottom, something like that. And tail's much the same. You can put in any kind of number you want here, press shift and enter, and it will return the bottom three rows there. Now, the next two functions that we're gonna look at are lock and I lock. So let's write them down here, lock and dot I lock. Now, before we go into the details, remember, we always want to run code first. If in doubt, run the code. That's our motto. So let's create a series here so we can demonstrate the difference between lock and iLock. So I'm gonna make one called animals. What's your favorite animal? Maybe, since we're using pandas, maybe we'll put a panda in there. And one more, snake. Now we're gonna set the index here. Now, if we created a series, by default, the index will be zero to however many things we have here. But well, let's actually see that rather than talk about it. Because remember, if in doubt, run the code. Animals, zero to four in order. But if we wanted our own custom index, which we can do by passing the index parameter, and then we put in a list to say zero, three, and we want this index to be out of order on purpose so we can demonstrate lock and I lock. There we go, so we have five things here, five things here, both Python lists. Now if we run this, we can see that our index has changed. So let's have a look. Animals.lock3. If we call this, what do you think will come back? And lock you can consider as short for location. So let's try. Shift enter, dog, and snake. Beautiful. So what lock refers to is the index numbers. So because we have three and three here, it returns two items. Let's try animals.lock9. What do you think this will come back with? Which animal? Shift enter, bird. The reason being is because bird is at index nine. So we created bird, one, two, three, one, two, three, index nine. Okay, now let's try our car sales data frame. If you're not sure what this looks like, we'll run it here so we can see, okay, zero, one, two, three, the index is still in order here, beautiful. Now let's run lock on this, dot lock three. What do you think this will come back with? Which car? Let's try it out. Oh, beautiful, comes back with position three. A beautiful black BMW for $22,000. It can be all yours. I could become a, a car salesman. What do you think? So now let's try another one. Let's try iLock this time. We'll put iLock here. 
So we go animals dot i lock three. And this time we're doing dot i lock instead of just lock. So if we have five items here, what do you think this will come back with? Let's try it out. Shift enter, panda. Now, so we can see it, let's put a new cell here and go animals. Beautiful. So what I lock refers to, I lock refers to position. So we can see here, zero, one, two, three. If this was in order, remember, Python lists and data frames and series start from zero. I lock refers to position, whereas lock refers to index. Let's try maybe with our car sales data frame. Car sales .i lock three. Ah, it comes back with the same as lock. That is because if we go up, oh, actually, let's just do it here. Car sales. If we have a look at our data frame, I lock. Position three, remember, because I lock refers to position, so zero, one, two, three, is the same as index three. So that's the main two points you have to remember about I lock and lock, is that I lock refers to position, and we'll put in here lock, lock refers to index. They're the main two differentiations there. Okay. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that with iLock and lock, you can use slicing. So if you've ever used Python lists, you might be familiar with slicing, but if not, I'll show you what that looks like. So we might type in animals.iLock colon three. And what this means is, rather than talk about it, let's run the code, is give us the items in animals up to position three. Now, iLock doesn't include position three. So it'll give us, remember, start from zero, zero, one, two, three. So it's going to give us up to three. Now let's try it with the car sales data frame. Car sales dot lock colon three. Shift and enter. There we go. It's given us up to and including index three. Basically, this is the same as calling head, but with four. So car sales dot head four. Excellent. Okay, let's keep going. Now we've seen this previously, but let's say we wanted to select just this make column and have a look at what's going on there. So the way to select a column is to type in its name in square brackets next to the name of the data frame as a string. Shift enter. There's the make column. Let's have a look at the color column, car sales, color. Excellent, we've selected that. Now there's two ways you might see. I want you to be familiar with both of these ways of selecting a column. So if we go car sales dot make, it's easier to type than something like that, but this is the same thing. Let me demonstrate. Car sales make. These two lines of code are going to do the exact same thing. Let's prove it. I'll put a split in here by hitting Control Shift minus. We're gonna go make, excellent. And we're gonna go car sales dot make. Now, the only real difference between these two is the syntax. So whichever one you prefer, you might want to use, but what you should know about the dot notation is that if your column name has a space in it, the dot notation won't work. So if we try to do this for odometer km, it'll come back with an error. But if we put a cell in here and go car sales odometer km, run this, it'll return the odometer. So they're the two main differences between selecting a single column. And now one last thing before this video gets too long is that if you wanted to select a single column, but put a little bit of a filter on it, let's do it with the make column, but we only want rows with the car make Toyota. So can you decipher what's going on here? We're saying car sales, okay, and then we're passing it this little condition here. This is called Boolean indexing. Let's hit Shift Enter to have a look. So this is going to say, hey, pandas, give us a car sales data frame, and this condition, 
is I only want the car sales data in the make column, which are equal to Toyota. Now, what if we only wanted maybe those with over 100,000 kilometers on the data, on the, on the data, on the odometer? I've got data on the brain. That's why we're saying it. Let's get odometer here. KM, because remember, we can't do the dot notation. So you can create a habit which one you want to type. Usually you pick one way of selecting a single column and stick with that throughout your entire notebook. So we want greater than 100,000. Now, this is going to give back the rows that fulfill this condition. And so you can imagine how advanced you could get with this. If you had, say, 100,000 different cars, you might put in a few more different criteria in here. But this is just a few simple use cases of how we can view and select data. Now, there's a couple more we're going to go through, but to prevent this video from going for too long, we're going to take a little break, go back over what we've gone just through and practice a little bit before the next one. But otherwise, we'll see some more ways of selecting and viewing data in the next video.